Okay, I think we're back. Yeah, so uh, the game not only crashed, uh, but the computer also just hard stuttered there for a second. Like everything went black and then it, it fixed itself. It also fucked up my sound settings too. Uh, how do I sound to you guys? Do I sound the same as before? Uh, do I sound any different? Sounds good. Sounds fine. Sound the same. Okay, that's good. Cool. Uh, can you guys hear the game and all that sort of shit? We got to watch that cutscene again, by the way. Uh, maybe sometime after you're done streaming, it's a good idea to reinstall the GPU driver because that sort of crash is literally the GPU driver crashing. And if it still occurs afterwards, check your GPU temps while playing a game. If that's the case, your GPU overheating. Oh, I never had a GPU overheat issue before. I mean, but I'm not willing to put anything uh, past that. So no, I'll probably do that afterwards. Yeah. Literally the first time it's ever happened. Like, I mean, the last time shit like that happened was actually with my Xbox controller driver uh, causing fuck ups. And I had to update the firmware of the controller to stop it from happening. Yeah, which unfortunately means this stream is not going to be two parts, which is annoying, but whatever. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really worried about like editing into one part because this, this thing's going to be on a playlist anyway, and you guys are likely going to be binging, so it doesn't really matter. Because me personally, if I'm watching something on a playlist, that shit auto plays anyway. It was a lingering effect of the gold saucer saucing. <laughs> totally sauce all over those guys. That was freaky, though. I fucking hate when my fucking computer does that, though. Not that it happens a lot. It's just that when it does happen, especially as I'm streaming. Jesus Christ. It's very scary. It just startles me. Probably the most annoying thing, though, it, 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 that it, it just fucking saps all the momentum of the stream away. You know, because I had to fucking stop the stream and then I had to resume it. And now everyone that was here is probably gone because like, ah, I guess that's the end of the show. It was like you fucked it. You fucked it right in the ass, computer. And now the computer is going to grow self-aware and crash again out of spite. The Final Fantasy Heaven's Word, the Final Quest Part 2, Part 3. Is that an Attack on Titan reference? Because I think I just saw a similar article. And I remember a friend just saying, I fucking hate this series so much. <laughs> Doom spike. Thankfully, we only got to kill three of these. So. I'm not going to get the credit for this one, I think, because Blue Dino already hit it, so he's going to get the credit for that one. Yeah, yeah. I got to tag one of these. Mine! Okay. Okay. We got our hunks of nonka flesh. Nonka flesh. We need something to. We need something to get on the good side of the the the, the good naths. I mean, I've read the Attack on Titan manga, so I can only wait for the Fallout when the anime gets to the end. Yeah, because there's there's folks that are just wholly dedicated to the uh, the show itself and not the book. I'm like that with a couple of shows that I watch. So, you know, Mob Psycho 100, I love that show to death. I, that was such a good run. But it's like, if I really wanted to see how it ends, I could just read the manga. But I decided not to do that because, like, no, nah, the anime is fine enough. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to jump, I don't want to jump ahead just to see how it works. At that point, I might as well just fucking load up its TV tropes page and shit. But it's like, no, nah, man, I want, I want to, I want to enjoy the ride without really knowing ahead of time.
With Berserk, reading the manga is basically a requirement. Now, why would you say that, Neko Blue? Is it because does 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 the Berserk anime not fully adapt any everything the manga covers, or is it just it's just easier to dissect? Oh, because most Berserk anime adaptations suck ass. <laughs> because the manga still isn't finished and the original anime ended in the 90s. Oh my god. Oh, wait, hold on. What's that? What's that one on Netflix that I saw a couple of years ago? Was that a completely different adaptation? I think it was like a 3D uh, anime one. Yeah, I know like um, the artist uh, passed away just like uh, last year or two years ago. So yeah, that, that, you know, that'll do it, but I wasn't aware that there were like different anime adaptations of Berserk because I, I I don't I, I never read Berserk and I, I never watched Berserk, even though I feel like I really should, considering that a lot of things that I enjoy. Oh, Berserk a lot <laughs> like Final Fantasy. Okay, so it sounds like for Berserk, I'm better off just reading the book because the anime adaptations, any of them, don't really cover much, if at all. Yeah, so this is the NAF. This is the uh, this is the insect race. Did there, I, I don't know if there's supposed to be a specific reference to some insect. I get more roach. It, it's either roach or beetles, something of like that. Uh, but they are they are a bug race. Uh, this is also where the tribal quest is for them too. That's why the music's different. Uh, but we won't be doing the NAF for a long time. Although I will be doing the NAF travel quest at some point because I want the I want the special dance you get when you do all three of the travel quests of Heaven's Sword. Because I am definitely doing Moogle Beast Tribe. Oh, not Beast Tribe. Okay. Beast Tribe is racist. I gotta say tribal quest. I'm doing the Moogle Tribe quest because I want the Moogle dance, of course. And because it's also a great source of experience for crafting. Uh, and gathering, if I recall correctly, it might be just crafting, but I'm doing all three because I want the special rewards. Unfortunately, that means I have to deal with the Moogle tribe shit, and oh my god, the Moogle quests are so fucking obnoxious. Yeah, it's called the Moonlift Dance, I believe. Uh, thank you, Alchemy. Yeah, I love that dance. It's legit one of my favorite dances in the game. No skipping cutscenes. You experience it in full. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> it's not even so much like the quest themselves. It's just how much you have to go all over the fucking map. Yeah, so that fleet here. I think this is the... No, no, this is the Aether Current quest, which we have to do anyway. Oh, uh, Zodiar is actually riding the mount you get from the tribal quest. This strange insect that makes this weird noise. Actually, can you get closer to remind me, uh, Zodiar, if you're watching the stream? It sounds like a didgeridoo. What a unique sound. I love Moogles in Final Fantasy, but I don't particularly enjoy these games. Yeah, the, the Moogles in this game are absolute fucking shit fiends. Like, I get having comic relief, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> Better than Loper, it says Atlas Silver. Interesting. Hmm, I'll have to think about that. What's more annoying, the Moogles or the Loperits? Uh, Loperits are the bunny race in Endwalker for uh, those curious. We won't be seeing them in this series for a while, but... I'm trying to think of, like, the tribal quests. I didn't mind the tribal quests or the Loperets. I do not fear my duty. <laughs> At least Loperets have a rave room. <laughs> what do the Moogles have? No, they have a they have a circle arena with a lot of pink puffballs and a, a statue dedicated to your hard work. I mean, a giant Loper hasn't tried to kill us yet. No. Loperets are much more annoying, so much more annoying. Really? No, I'm going to have to disagree with that. Uh, 
uh, Silver, because I, I, I find Moogles just insufferable in 14. It, just in regards to the things they make you do. Like Loperit's cutesy sort of vibe and their cartoonish demeanor, I will, you can argue, does get old. And I won't necessarily disagree with that. But the Moogles are just, fuck you. Yeah, so you get like the sweet rave, like this thing. I love this mount. I love this mount. <laughs> oh, okay. I completely forgot about the Namazu. Actually, I think I might hate the Namazu more. <laughs> Actually, I think Nomazu are probably my most hated uh, species in Final Fantasy XIV because they're just as obnoxious as the Moogles, but like even more so. Like the Mazu are not only selfish, but they're also incredibly lazy too. I mean, no, I meant to, I meant, I meant to say that uh, in reverse, that they're not only lazy, but they're also incredibly selfish, too. Goblins are okay. You know, outside of the Illuminati, I mean, those guys are jerks. But regular uh, goblins? Okay. Hey, how's it going, Linky? Uh, no, it's not, um... It's not racist, Santiago. It's speciesist. Uh, it's completely different. I gotta go all the way fucking down there, dude. Oh, that's for stolen munitions. Do I have to head down there now? I'm not going to. I'll wait until later. Because that is just a little too out of the way right now to justify the trip. I'll wait until I have to go down there. <laughs> going through the Namazo tribe, I was thinking, I want to help these creeps out... Creeps avoid extinction. Why? I was like, hey, fucking no, these seven years can't come fast enough. <laughs> I'm fast forwarding the clock, boys, because you annoy me. Die. Here's your flesh. Uh, Superstorm, I think that's your one for 58 months. Damn, Mario RPG remake exists. Yeah, that's pretty hype. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. The hunter becomes the quest. Oh, that's the Chocobo cycle. This is actually a major side quest of this area because it involves a hunter and the Chocobo and, you know, multiple NPCs. I think the first one holds an Aether current, but after that, it's just a bunch of side story. Uh, and then there is a lesson in humility. I think that's another Aether current quest. So, we're, but we're just going to keep continuing on where we're going because we're not going back to Annex Trine for a while. The best tribal quest, in my opinion, let me see. I might as well break it down by every expansion. The Amaja were okay. I mean, all the Realm Reborn stuff was kind of forgettable. Uh, the Amaz were okay. The Sahagans were fine. Uh, the Ixels were okay. I mean, the Ixels was the crafting one, and uh, I mean, the, the Ixels in terms of crafting is like the fucking worst part of it. But I like the story tied behind it, so that was okay. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Selfs can eat a dick. There was uh, who else am I forgetting? I got the Amaja, I got the Sahagan, I got the Sylphs, I got the Igsol. Am I missing one? Uh, Kobold. I don't even remember the Kobold ones. Like, I did that shit, like, years ago, and I don't remember it. So I don't think it's probably that interesting. Or I just could be misremembering. Uh, Heaven Sword. The Nath were okay. Vanus suck, because I hate going through Sea of Clouds so much. Um, and Moogles are Moogles. But the Allied Tribal Quest is fine, um, because I like the rewards given to you. Honestly, I don't think Tribal Quest got good until Stormblood post. Because the uh, Notmen, I think the Snake People, those were okay. Uh, afterwards was the... Hold on, hold on. 
Uh, you had the snake people, then you had... Hold on, I'm blanking. I gotta close my eyes, because if I look at chat, I'm gonna get the answer, and that's cheating. I should know this shit by heart, man. Da, 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 da. There was the Namazu, the, the snake people, uh, and... What the fuck was the other one? The Kojin. The uh, turtles. Uh, uh, the turtles were fine. Uh, the Kojin tribe was okay. Uh, Shadowbringers, I think Shadowbringers actually might have my favorite tribal quest because I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed the, uh, fucking, what are the name of the folks in the, in the forest? Uh, not the fae. No, um, the, the fairies, um, the pixies were, the, the pixies were fun. Uh, the Katari, thank you, uh, Silver. The Katari were fun because I love the, like, branching story that you can do with it. And I love the Dwarven quest line. The Dwarven... All right, so actually, legit answering the question, I think the Dwarven uh, tribal quest might be my favorite one. Uh, because you get a really fucking cool dance to go with it. You get a battle tank that shoots a laser, as you've seen before. And the story is just amazingly silly. Uh, as for Endwalker, since we have all three tribal quests done at this point, we have... Uh, we have the the elephants, which are, I'm blanking on the, the actual uh, species name for them. Uh, you have the Omicron, which was also uh, the Omicron one was also really good. Uh, and then you have Low Prince, which I also really enjoyed because you get the sweet rave room. Uh, the Arcasadora, thank you very much, Silver. I yeah, I would not remember that by myself because I'm fucking stupid. How's it going? I find the dwarves uh, being a tribe really interesting, considering they're supposed to be the first Zalala. Yeah, I know. I think so. Wait, did we we only started calling them tribals, uh, tribal quests in Endwalker, right? Because that was kind of like the discussion when dwarves were confirmed to be like a, a beast tribe, and I was like, what? Because it's like, what? Well, they're they're not. <laughs> But they're not beast tribes. By this game's definition, they're just regular people. Like, they're just Lalafels in a different world. Why are we calling them beast tribes? Because they weren't city level civilized? I mean, is that really it, though? They're just, they're just Lalafels <laughs> that wear helmets with beards. Hey, Naftron, what's going on? Uh-oh. Yeah, it's just like when I when I think of the term beast tribe, which the game itself veers away from because uh the game acknowledges like beast tribe was was a derogatory term. So they stopped calling them beast tribes and they just go with tribal, which I actually like. I think that's a detention detail that's that that's pretty endearing. Uh, dwarves were classified as a beast tribe, and I just think I think because I hear the word beast, I think of uh, I, I think of an animalistic species. You know, the Amaja are lizards, the Exal are birds, the Sahagan are fish people, uh, the Nath are insects. Uh, dwarves are just Lollifels. <laughs> so it's like, I hear the beast chop, it's like, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh, I'm jumping the gun. I meant to go down here. Or did I? Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. I mean, Lalafels to be out. No, no, Lalafels are already fucking vegetables, guys. You can't be two things at once. <laughs> Although I gotta ask, personally, as a Lalafell player, for since the beginning of ever, Lalafells are often referred to as potatoes, right? because they're small. I gotta ask, what kind of fucking potatoes have you seen that look like Lollafels to justify the potato nickname? If I saw a potato, 
that was this shaped, I'm sending that potato to the Smithsonian. That's a really fucking weird looking potato. It's got hair and shit. I think it's the proportions head down, but the proportions head down is more of a inverted pear. Well, not even a, not even an inverted pear, just a pear. Like small head, wide ass bottom. <laughs> I would get, I get more pears, not potatoes or popotos to use the in-game uh, lore or context. Oh, Nath Cultivator, please leave me alone. Oh, oh, there's more. Aren't Lalafell snacks for Gubu? I mean, personally, a lot of large creatures tend to bully Lalafells because of their smaller statue, so. I think that's also just an in-game thing that's referenced. Like, Lalafells are often, they fall prey to a lot of fate encounters because they, well, we're, we're diminutive in size, so we're, we're easy picking. We have stout strength, and apparently we're also like the best jumpers in the world, but we're still small, uh, which makes us easy picking for a lot of large creatures. Excuse me. Ex hey, that machine of skill is gone. That's cheating. That is an illegal move that Nath Heldrone just did there. Machinists do not have Granado shot anymore. I miss Granado shot every day. <laughs> lead shot uh i don't necessarily miss lead shot i do I, I i like it because you know you shoot in the sky and it, it, it was your dot basically but um i it's okay look they brought back wrench you never know it may return yeah but i love wrench wrench was always cool uh <sighs> So, personally, I didn't mind Machinists and Heaven Sword because I like the ammunition system. I didn't think it was that bad. I will agree, though, that what it eventually led to in Stormblood with the heat mechanic, you just needed to. It's, hey, Machinist Stormblood is so fucking garbage. <laughs> I hate it, Machinists and Stormblood. And that bummed me out, too, because I enjoyed Machinists so much in Heaven Sword. Uh,. I watch what you say, Daddy. I miss Stormblood Mission so much. No alchemy. That just means you have poor taste. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Someone's got to tell you. No, no, no. I'm kidding. No, I, I, I just, I just don't see the appeal of the overheat mechanic in Stormblood, man. Uh, because I, it, it just, I, I, I just didn't feel good using it. To, just to bring back that old uh, fucking critique. It's like if I don't feel good using it, I don't like it. And the overheating system in Machinist for Stormblood just felt too cumbersome. Okay, we're about to fight our first Primal of Heaven Sword. It is Ravana. This is the Primal of the Nath. And uh, I will be setting up a party for this, and this will be minimum idol level. We're going to do this as close to on content as possible because I don't want to just fucking melt this thing. I mean, it will melt anyway if you know how to push buttons, but still. Back then when Flamethrower had a use, <laughs> I mean, if you're talking for single target action stuff, you're right. Because I think, like, the correct me if I'm wrong, it's been so long, but I think I remember this bit. You used Flamethrower, like, on the opening, right, to get yourself overheated as soon as possible. That way your opener was, like, just more powerful, right? I get the principle behind it, but that just fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but I still like using Flamethrower on, like, a bunch of ads in a dungeon. To me, I still have love for it in that sense. But as for a single target, just to make sure that you had heat for your opener, it was miserable. I love where Machinist is now, though. I love the fact that they have more emphasis on the Machinist aspect. It's basically Edgar's tools from Final Fantasy VI. You got your air anchor, you got your chainsaw, you got your, you got your drill. 
uh, you have your bio blaster, your auto crossbow. It's everything that Edgar was in Final Fantasy VI, and I love Final Fantasy VI, so of course I'm going to say Machines is better now than it's ever been. But that's just me. And woe, wrench be upon you. I just love throwing a wrench. Is Ravana unique? I was asking the question earlier, and I think the game crashed uh, before it was given an answer. Uh, but yeah, I believe Ravana is holds the distinction for being a unique summon that Final Fantasy XIV introduces. When does Machinist get a giant mech is my question. Level 70 or level 80? Was it level 80 or level 70? No, um, level 80. I think it's level 80. Or was it level 70? No, level 80. Yeah, it's level 80. Level 80. Yeah, I personally, I, I love what Machinist has become uh, since Shadowbringers. I can also make the same sort of extension to Summoner. I love where Summoner is now. I don't miss old Summoner at all. And I know that's probably a little more contentious than Machinist discourse, uh, but personally, I just, I, I hate it, Summoner. <laughs> Sacred blades, wrath of the colony, conqueror of the world, hear our prayer. Pray grant unto your devoted children the gift of your divine presence. Uh, sort of us, I'm in Diabolos in the data, uh, the crystal data center. That was the wrong button. <laughs> I didn't mean to drop the base. <laughs> oh, shit. Fucking common rider villain. All strength to the colony. Speak and I shall listen. Okay, at least he's courteous. <laughs> Test your children's territory. We wished only to learn the reason you wage war against the dragons. Thou wouldst flirt with death merely to satisfy thy curiosity. Wherefore should the glorious conquests of the Nath concern thee so, Elysium? struggle against the worms fareth poorly, and thou art desirous of a pact. Well, I think I could open my Saturday for you. <laughs> we crave no alliance, Lord Ravana. Only peace. We would bring an end to our war with the dragons. Yet so long as they remain embroiled in this conflict with your children, our goal shall remain out of reach. Never before have the Nath risen up in such numbers, and never yet with you at their head. Why do you lead them to war? Thy question hath no meaning. To live is but to fight. 
Oh god, he's a shonen and primal. <laughs> As I feared, your very existence is an obstacle to our goal. Since you are so fond of fighting, we challenge you, Lord of the Nath. Uh, no, it's not necessarily evil, Mick. Um, it's just that he's born to fight and fight he fight he will. Swear to withdraw your soldiers from Dravanian soil. So we're going to match him, you know, strength for strength, wit for wit, to knock some sense into him. Yeah, but I, I would not classify Ravana as uh, evil. He's just very bloodthirsty. But should I emerge the victor, I would have thee swear to serve in mine army till thy last breath is spent. Oh my god, Ravana and Susano teaming up or meeting up would be just like absolute fucking ham. I would die from cholesterol, cholesterol with all that ham. Hey, Alex and Forsyth, I appreciate the raid. Thank you very much. And I believe the first bout is mine. All right, here we go. This is our fucking. This is our demo of Final Fantasy 16. Fucking like eight years before the game actually came out, we got ourselves a primal battle, ladies and gentlemen. On one corner we have Ravana, the Lord of the Nath, and on this corner, uh, utilizing crystals that are conveniently placed here. I mean, not conveniently placed. That they were used to summon Ravana. Uh, 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 Lady Iceheart is going to once again become the vessel for Shiva. Hey, she got the hunk. She got the one hundred fifty dollar mount too. Uh, model, I mean emote. <laughs> Shiva with a <the> steel chair. <laughs> Too bad she jobs this fight, so we have to clean up this life. Fuck. <laughs> Gilberg! <laughs> I thought you were Shiva! Ooh, better pop a uh, Sheltron, Ravana. <laughs> That's a buster. Well, by virtue of numbers, Ravana has this in the bag because he has four swords and Shiva only has one. That's it. <laughs> That's gotta be Leviathan! <laughs> uh, yeah, technically, uh, Ravana is also a higher level. Now stomp on his head. Maybe he gets off on that shit, actually. Don't do that. Cold bloody. Which prime was Hornswoggle under the ring then? God, I'd rather there not be a Hornswoggle at all. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> How it feels to five chew gum. I thought myself stronger. Mayhap with more crystals. Oof. Thankfully, uh, she does not have a hole in her chest. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, did we just fucking watch her die? Thou 
That's Mr. Craven of Light to you. <laughs> the Yamcha death pose. Or the Peter Griffin death pose. I will absolutely gladly take you on. Just make his model just fucking turned in place. There was no that was not sophisticated at all. <laughs> this definitely was a PlayStation 3 game. <laughs> but uh yeah, yeah, I will gladly take Ravana on. Just you, me, and seven other guys that I found on the street. Thock is thock! Hard now accessible. Alright, folks, we have unlocked our first trial of Heaven Sword. This is Ravana. And I am going to, well, I, I'm going to, uh, oh yeah, this is a unique instance, uh, so I'm kind of all alone here. Uh, fucking, uh, wait, what I'll do is, uh, I'll invite you, because you're in the same place as I am. All right, then I'm going to open up Party Finder, and again, this is first come, first serve. I will, uh, again, repeat, this will be minimum idle level, uh, no echo, uh, we're going to play this as released. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to set up a party, a private party finder. Uh, I mean, it really doesn't matter. Uh, silence, echo, minimum mile level. Form private party. You guys know what the password is all the time. Okay. First come, first serve. If we do not fill up, then we will rely on uh, Duty Finder to fill up the rest. Okay, we are good. Summoner Gang <laughs> and one Dragoon. <laughs> oh, you got to be faster than that. All right. Uh, we'll do a ready check, see everyone's good. Middle mile level, silence, echo. All right, we are good to go. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ravana. Our first trial of Heaven's Word. Uh, we got that? Yeah. Time to take off the job, Stu. <laughs> oh, we're going that roll. I forgot to update the portrait again. God damn it. I keep DMVing myself. I love this song. I love this song and the second theme. The second theme is also really fucking good, dude. So I'm gonna have to see your driver's license. <laughs> I like the Primal's version of this theme a lot. Oh, you yeah, actually, Neko, I don't. <laughs> Fuck, man. I hate when opinions differ. <laughs> yeah, this is an intense waltz. That's it, I'm popping food anyway. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> A pen dragon sees an insect. <laughs> Uh, so Ravana, um, very aggressive primal. He lives for the fight. Um, also throughout like the second phase, he will just start getting uh, damage stacks and he just starts hitting harder. The seeing tail is don't hit the sides that are covered in shields. If you do, you will get a pushback. It's, it's, it's negligible, all things considered. So, you know, just pay attention to which way the shields spawn and then just make sure you're not hitting that side of the hitbox. Uh, he's going to do an attack here. It's called Prelude to the Slaughter. Uh, this is the point blank, so when the cast is finished, you need to be away from him. Otherwise, you're going to get doinked. But uh, I have a couple of more GCDs I can do before I need to back up, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to back up now, though. Oop. 
Gulvano, you just stood in that shit. <laughs> I mean, tank privilege. All right, now he's going to... He did prelude to slaughter uh, last time, so now he's going to do slaughter. Uh, this is... Uh, well, you get behind him. That's how you avoid it. Where'd he go? That's funny, like, even though we're middle of mile level for this shit and sink down, we are still kind of kicking his dick in because we're, we're, we have players here that actually know how to hit their buttons. All right, so now he's going to summon adds. Uh, and these butterflies can be a problem if we let them live for too long because uh, after a while, they will start casting, uh, I forget what, it's called falling laughter. Uh, and if it goes off, it will, uh, the butterfly will transform into a sword that Ravana will use to power up his ultimate attack. If we let too many butterflies live, the ultimate attack will just kill us. Because what happens is that for each sword that lives, uh, Ravana will hit us with a dash attack that gives us a Vuln. And those Vulns stack. A uh, Vuln, short for vulnerability. And if we just have too many Vuln stacks, then we'll just die from the damage. It's not fun. Yeah, so when you get to this part in the battle, you see the butterflies, focus down the butterflies. That multi-cleave attack there is... Um, you can dodge the attacks after the first cleave, believe it or not. I didn't find that out for, like, years. Oh, yeah, so this is his ultimate attack. This is Fuller, I think it was called. I love this animation right here. That's so fucking badass. All right, he's going to do a point blank. That's also going to uh, knock people back. So do not face a blank part of the wall. Do not be there. Do not be there. You're going to get knocked out. There you go. And now he's going to target the off tank uh, with this attack. So, Blue Dino, make sure you're not near anybody, because he's going to bully you personally for a little bit. Oh, I hit an orb, right? Ooh, so this is actually kind of opening my eyes a bit here. Because even minimum idol level, we are fucking rocking the shit out of him. So that really just goes to show that a lot of people at this point in the game still don't know how to push buttons. Because I get this fight in Trial Roulette a lot, and we'll still be at like 40% around this time. We look, yeah, we, we completely skipped Swift Slaughter. We... <laughs> Well, at least on a on a, on another note, uh, we will be going back to do all the primals in extreme minimum mile level, uh, just so that we can get some challenge. But yeah, that that was still that that was still pretty fast. So good job, guys! You guys know how to hit buttons. You sure that was minimum mile level? Yeah, I I checked the thing. It was minimum mile level. We gotta ignore the Kami and Mama? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. You do not disappoint. Warrior of light, would that I had your skill in battle. I do begin to see why so many place their faith in you. To be fair, I couldn't have done it without my friends. I mean, I summoned seven of them. That's amazing. For all his savagery, I do not think Ravana won to break his word. 
Provided the dragons do not trespass upon Nath lands, they should have little to fear of the primal's biting blades. We have done well, have we not? Come, let us return to Vidofnir and share these glad tidings. Once more, you achieve the impossible, bringer of light. What's funny, because I think, uh, uh, was it Eagle Yorm? I think that's how you pronounce her name. I think her and uh, Isel share the same voice actress. So it's like, wait. <laughs> At their bidding, warring gods will shake the firmament, and your world will be consumed in the swelling storm of chaos. You'd have to take off everything for. Oh my god. Yeah. Unfortunately, Thornton normal is a fucking pushover, even middle and mile level. That dude is just a joke. And that was a genuine complaint people hadn't when Heaven Sword was new. The final boss is too easy. Because uh, you just fucking melt him. Uh, even when people are, don't know how to push buttons. So, uh, I mean, thankfully that was rectified when they brought in the extreme. And to be, like, to be fair, the extreme version of Thornton is fantastic. I love that fight. Um, so we'll definitely uh, get our worth with that fight when we get to that. But I do agree. I wished, I wished normal Thornton was more of a fight. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for the help. We kicked his dick in because you guys know how to hit buttons. Good shape. Give something. Pat the back. Uh, what do you mean by push buttons? I mean y y you read your tooltips and you know how your you know how your actions combo into each other. A lot of people around this point and in Around Reborn don't know how to do that, and because of that, they are not utilizing their kit to their maximum effectiveness, and they're not doing nearly as much damage as they could be doing. Oh man, I gotta go all the way north, man. <laughs> yeah, not doing combos, not hitting their like uh, secondary actions. Like for an example, I guess to give some sort of comparison, right? So there's a there's a there's a there's an ability that dragoons have, right? Actually, let me let me, let me find some place in the park here. Uh, this rock looks fine. Yeah, there's an action that Dragoons have here, right? It's called Life Surge. Let's read what it does. Ensures critical damage for first weapon skill used while Life Surge is active. So when you pop this, it means that your next weapon skill is going to guarantee a critical hit. Now, logically, what attack do you think you use Life Surge with? If your answer was the first one, True Thrust, congratulations. You don't know how the game works. You are a newbie and you need to learn properly. So what this means actually is that we should be using Life Surge. Yeah, we're piercing talent. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, no, uh, we should always be using Life Surge with Full Thrust because check out the potencies. So the base potency of True Thrust, this is your combo. This is your first attack. This is your combo starter has a base potency of 170. This combos into Vorpal Thrust, which when comboed off of True Thrust, has a potency of 250. That's 250. At, uh, compared to 170, that's more damage. Your final hit of your 1-2-3 combo is Full Thrust, which when comboed off of True Thrust, has a whole 400 potency. Now, 400 potency hit with a Life Surge, that's a lot of damage. That's what you should be using Life Surge with. But a lot of folks just... You know, don't quite understand how the mechanics work just yet. So what they'll do is that they'll hit life surge and then they'll they'll just use the regular attack. And I was like, eh. oh, my webcam is blocking the description, but that's why I'm saying it out loud. Uh, but, you know, it's still uh, fucking I'm not repeating myself. Read your tooltips is what I'm saying. Uh, thank you, Alki. <laughs> Read your fucking tooltips for God's sakes. Open up. You hit the P key. You go to your actions. And you you just you just study this shit. Yeah, you gotta read. But this is how you learn your combos and shit when you're playing any class. Could be DPS, could be tank, could be healer, even limited jobs like blue mage got tooltips. If you wanna be 
the best that you can be, or at least start learning to be a more efficient player, you got to read your tooltips. You got to understand how some actions combo off of each other. Big damage. Absolutely. You know, a lot of folks playing a Realm Reborn up until Heaven Sword don't exactly get how combo actions work or abilities. You know, they can't fault them too much. Everyone's a newbie at some point in their lives, right? I was, oh my God, I was a terrible, terrible Final Fantasy XIV player back when I first started. And I wouldn't become decent, I would argue, until end game of Stormblood. You know, because I don't, I never really played MMOs, so I don't exactly understood. I didn't understand what a GCD was, an off GCD, uh, cooldowns, all that sort of shit. These were just words, and I didn't quite understand the meaning of said words, but now I do. And I like to think I'm a, you know, relatively decent player, if you were to check my FF logs. Uh, over on like on the savage stuff for Endwalker, you know, I got some pretty consistent purples, a couple of oranges there, which means I do good damage. It means I have a basic understanding of my job. Uh, don't look at my logs for this current tier though, because I'm party finding most of this shit and my numbers are low. <laughs> I can do bonds three, but dipshit McCoy down the street doesn't know how to do it and I died again. There goes my parse. Uh, speaking of, uh, how have the P912 Savages been treating you? So, me personally, because I'm party finding everything this uh, raid tier, I've only completed uh, P9 and P12. Uh, I'm sorry, P9 and P10. <laughs> I fucking skipped the other two fights. <laughs> I took a shortcut. Uh, no, but I've, uh, I've, I've only completed and farmed P9 and P10. I have not entered P11 yet. I hear that fight's much better than P10. And uh, P12, I'll get to when I get to it. I'm not expecting to clear the actual Savage tier until maybe by the end of this month, hopefully. I don't know. I'm so glad I decided not to PF this tier. Yeah, man, it can it can really suck. Oh, we're about to unlock Soul Mal already? Yeah, P10 is... <laughs> Is a thing. I really don't want to fucking go back to that quest line. I'd rather just attune. You know what? I, we were in the Annex Trine and I didn't attune to the Aetherite. I just did not do that, did I? Okay. Ten is a real blocker with the body checks. Eleven is pretty free, and twelve is starting to melt. Oh, really? Well, that's good to hear. Well, no, because I hear, yeah, because I, the, the the general consensus I've heard with the raid scene this time is that the DPS checks are actually really lenient, but the body checks kind of make that irrelevant because if you don't pass the body check, you just die. Uh, body checks, for the record, for those that are unaware, I believe that is how we classify a fight that has more focus on solving mechanics than it is meeting DPS checks. So it's like, if you can't solve the positional mechanics, you're just going to kill everybody and nobody, nobody's happy. Uh, are you the like, name of the, the oh, that's the, uh, that's, that unlocks a travel quest. Okay. Healers now have shit to do. Tanks have shit to do. Like, Endwalker's raid scene, this whole expansion has just been, fuck tanks. <laughs> Uh, fucking, where much way am I going? I've already been in the Annex Trines, so I'm just gonna keep following this pathway. Tanks and their special cells. I'll give you special cells. My asshole puckers every single time. And I'm not even tanking that fight, because I'm progging uh, the, the raid scene this this time with, as Red Mage. Uh, but even then, whenever we get to the, the the tank towers in that fight, my asshole puckers because like, please don't miss, please don't miss, please don't miss. Ah, they fell off. <laughs> Welp, <laughs> time to reset. Because man, that, that fight is really fucking punishing for just a single death. A 
see a tank flying and then like my, my, my mouse cursor is hovering over <laughs> Verays. <laughs> Thankfully, uh, m most times they're they're okay, but it's like, man, when they fucking fall, it's the worst thing. No, I don't think the Sabbath scene is ever going to be as bad as uh, Gordius and uh, Midas, the Alexander Savage raid uh, scene for uh, Heavensward, because... So I, I didn't start doing the Sabbath scene until Stormblood, but I've heard a lot of stories about how uh, Gordius and Midas killed a lot of fucking statics. Because if the fight's so difficult to the point where nobody's having fun clearing it, is it worth it? I ask myself this whenever I'm rocking an ultimate I don't like. <laughs> Hey, my sins are no longer catching up to me. I know Nanamo is okay. You can get off the floor now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I got to attune to this Aetherite. Uh, I think, um, do we know how long, how long it is until we get the soul mile? Oh, in a few minutes. Okay, if we're unlocking it now, then I think we're going to end the stream after we do the dungeon. Is that a blue check? Not a blue check, blue fucking blue quest. Who has? Oh, it's, a, it's in the second floor, isn't it? All right, hold on. This place is kind of annoying to traverse without flight. If only because like the narrow hallway, the, the, the camera doesn't like this place. I gotta be careful how I turn left and right here, otherwise it's like, ah, see, that's shit, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, there you are. S cause. Yeah, you're an eighth of current. Hey, Savage Asher, thank you very much for the uh, tier one. Almost five years straight. But you have Sapphic in your name. <laughs> that is the Aether Current Quest. Do I want to go there now? Yeah, yeah. Let's just do it now. I like this area, though. <laughs> Only thing relating to me, that's straight. <laughs> Uh, Jason. Oh, I thought, I thought Jason was sleeping already. He posted a thing on Twitter, though. You wouldn't exceed a rate limit. <laughs> you wouldn't download a Tesla. I will, I will admit there is a morbid curiosity that I, ha I do have in regards to trying out old Alexander Savage. Not on Romani, though. Maybe on my main character. Because I always wanted to fight, like, Brute Justice Savage just for that final form, like, on content. Because that fight is fucking nuts. But it's also, like, you know, only when I feel like I have nothing else left to do or prove. Just do it with a blue mage. Just guaranteed, just as nuts. Oh man, I you know that's another thing I haven't done yet. I haven't done the savage stuff with uh, blue mage just to get my marble mount. You know, sometimes I just forget this place just whole ass exists, but this is where we unlock so now. It's nice. It's inside of a mountain. Oh, and there's a sightseeing locker. Oh, oh, hold on a second. Wait, that, that can wait. But we can do the sightseeing log now. Yeah, there's more right now. This is what you got with the blue mage stuff. Uh, this should be a lookout. I mean, they're mostly all lookout. Oh, no, it wasn't. Uh, is it prey? 
Oh, no, no, no. I, got, cause I, I think I was targeting somebody. Yeah, okay. It might be prey. Yeah, there we go. Okay. It was honestly very fun doing all 12 of the Alexander Savage raids synced. Even if A11 caused me to have forward and back stuck in my head for ages. Well, I mean, that song never gets old. I love Exponential Entropy. I fucking love that song to death. Uh, for those uh, unaware, it was the forward and back song that I used in my Final Fantasy II review. Because I think it's really fucking appropriate there. Uh, I love that song, though. It's so good. Despite the fact that it only has, like, one lyric. <laughs> What are you doing? What? Oh, okay. I thought you were scanning me. I paid for the mount just for that song. Let me see. I, the Bone Father, I would just load up a YouTube video. <laughs> That's free. <laughs> uh, my favorite is the Shadowbringers raid bosses one and two. Now, what are we talking about? Psychotic X uh, raid bosses one and two. Are we talking about like the first two bosses of the raid scene? So Eden Prime and Voidwalker? Uh, Brute Justice Savage broke the group I did Savage and EX with. Our poor tank, only one person left alive. Big guy was at 1%, so we thought we had things won. Then he transforms, restores to full HP, and we are laughing. Our tank is panicking and then dying as you end up with PTSD over that one attack. That's fucked up. Like, you're thinking, like, oh my god, this is it, we're actually gonna do it. And then he says, lol, no, F phase two. He's got wings now, which totally justifies the full HP restore. Fuck you, Brute Justice. Uh, raid bosses went into a music. Okay, okay, yeah. So you're just talking about the Final Fantasy VIII boss battle thing. Yeah, it's okay. Unfortunately, that song has been tainted because all I think of now is the fucking birds. That fight is so boring. <laughs> I hate the birds uh, in uh, Shadowbringers. Uh, specifically, I mean, the normal fight is boring too, but the Savage one is also... Ugh. Yeah, that fucking board... Uh, board... <laughs> the bird nato phase uh, towards the end is definitely unique like I, I like when savage encounters have like a unique aspect to them like a unique phase that you don't get in a normal encounter but the bird nato wasn't really anything special All right, this is our, our, so technically this is our first Heavensward dungeon that's mandatory. This is Soul Mile. Uh, but it's not our first dungeon for Heavensward, as you saw earlier. That was Dust Vigil. But this is our first mandatory one. This is Soul Mile. We got to go beat up some dragons. That said, we're going to need a DPS and a healer. And I want to prioritize folks that were not with me for Ravana. Uh, oh, Joaquim is here, actually. We can invite Joaquim. Uh, and, all right. So, uh, Mr. Skeletal, you're here. No, wait. You're queuing up for something. Not go we're, not, we're not inviting you. We're not inviting you because you're queuing up for something. Probably a roulette. All right. So, we need to settle who's going to take over the healer spot. Now, Editha makes a good argument by already being a white mage. However, Alki, I believe, is also already uh, in a healer. I'm going to... I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study you for a second, Alki. Our uh, Alki's an Astro. Are you pentamelded? You're not. No, look, Nick, no pentamelds? You don't even have your pants melded. <sighs> Losing points here, Alki. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, God. I hate... It's like picking a favorite child. And I don't have kids. All right, we'll, we'll do it this way. We'll do it this way. I'm thinking of a number between one and ten. Editha and Alki, send a tell of what you think the number is, and whoever's closest will uh, will, will get the healer spot.
All right, Alka gave me uh, their number. I'm not sure if that is even here. Four. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Okay, so my number was three, Alki said two, Editha said four. <laughs> so I'm stuck in the middle, and we have not done anything to... <laughs> okay, um, um... Do I have a coin? <laughs> Hold on, I think I do, actually. Okay, I thought I had a coin. <laughs> We're just going to flip this dollar instead. Editha, uh, call which side the dollar is going to land. Will it land on the face side or will it land on the one side? Yeah, we're doing this. <laughs> This is so fucking stupid. Yeah, I know. It's like, dude, they have coin flip apps. Just use that. It's like, no, he wanted to use an actual coin. Okay, I'm going to throw it. Aditha says face side. It landed on the folded half. <laughs> I'm going to do that again. Hold on. I'm going to make this nice and crispy so it doesn't fucking do that again. One second. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make this work. We're going to make this work. All right, edit the said face side. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, it's really starting now. It landed on the back side, so Alki's coming with me. <laughs> Alki's not here. Oh no, Alki's over there. <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, are we good to go? <laughs> Let me do a rage check. What the fuck was that? That's not even content. I can't even argue that that was content. That was just nonsense. That was just padding. He's filling for time. I didn't even play an ad. You know what? I'm, see, this is, this is why, you know, I'm not a full-time Twitch streamer, folks. The smart thing to do while I was getting up looking for that fucking coin was to run an ad, and I didn't even do that. I just left you guys hanging. I still have Minnow Milo sound cycle turned on. You know, as a as a as a joke, why don't we just do Soul Mile Minnow Milo with no echo? All right, Devon brother, have uh, have fun with your queue. Yeah, this will be the last thing we do though, uh, before we call it a stream. Because um, we, I fuck fuck me, dude. I keep forgetting to set my portrait up. I still love how Battle on the Bridge was unexpectedly difficult on Saint Mine. Withdraw- No, I'm not gonna withdraw. We're already here, Crystal Hero. I'm not gonna do that. Although, you're not wrong. Eating my smoked chicken? Ugh. 
It's hideous. <laughs> All right, Blue Dino, uh, whenever you're good to go. Uh, make sure your stance is on, too. Need to see your adventure licenses, please. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to pull larger, uh, feel free to blue down. I'm pretty sure Optic can handle it. Uh, just mind your cooldowns, please. I just fucking triple weaved like three actions, and I felt so dirty doing that. Uh, do keep in mind we are also minimum idol level and no echo. So we are at the bare minimum stats required to complete this dungeon, so uh, Blue Dino might be a little extra squishy. Also, potions are also a good idea, absolutely. I always carry a set of uh, hyper potions on me. Especially like, I don't know, I feel like if, if you're an up and coming tank and you're doing content for the first time in dungeons, a hyper potion is just free mitigation. Like that heal goes a long way. Like they they lose less they they lose more significance from like in the raid scene but like in in previous content especially oh my god it's it's basically a fear it, it's a free cure too. Can dungeons even give echo? I am pretty sure they do if it allows it and if you die enough times. Although, don't quote me on that because it's been so long since I've ever had a very miserable dungeon run like that. Because often what happens now is that I get a miserable dungeon run and one of the guys end up leaving. And then we all just leave. Like, I know of the epic echo, but that's only when you do it unsync. And that's not the same. Alki is dying. Oh boy, my disembowel is about to run out, so I gotta do a single target action just to reset the, the, the buff. There we go. Hey, Raskvinik. I take it when you get to the other expansions, you'll change your class as well. Yes. Uh, for Stormblood, I'm gonna play as a uh, dancer. And for Shadowbreakers, I'm gonna rock Sage. And then for Endwalker, I'm going back to Monk. Because I feel I should end as I start with Monk. Because Monk is my main job for this character. Uh, so this boss is going to summon a bunch of Dravanian Hornets. We can ignore them. Uh, because we're already spanking this boss to the point where we don't need to. Uh, normally, in any other uh, scenario, I would say, no, spank the bees. Because for every bee or hornet, I guess, that... Uh, the boss eats, he gets a damage up. And while all, almost all of his attacks are avoidable, there is one, I think it's Spit, that's unavoidable. It's a raid wide. And if he's eaten too many hornets, Spit will just fucking kill you. But the DPS check for this boss is so lenient anyway, we generally don't have to worry about that. So yeah, so here's what happens, like, the, the, the bees are getting closer, he does a suck-up attack, and then he does Flower Devour. If there are any bees in the vicinity when he does that, he absorbs the bees. And now he's got two damage stacks, and now he's gonna do Spit, and it hurts. You know, so, thankfully, two damage stacks is not, you know, end-all, be-all. But I think if, for minimum idol level, if he has, like, four or five stacks, that might wipe the group. Yeah, it is just an easier ver it's a way easier version of turn six from Bahamut. Yeah, you're right about that. Only there's no blighted okay. Yeah, there's no funny haha you die button. Yeah, but the the general idea with the jobs I've chosen for our travels is that by the end of Endwalker, I'll have like a job leveled in every category. I'll have my melee, I'll have my physical ranged, I'll have my caster. Oh no, actually caster's the only one I'm not gonna have. Uh, and tank. 
But I already have Paladin leveled up to like 83, so I'm good there. I just got to level up a caster, but I don't know who I'm going to level up with, with Romani. And we were talking about this too, like, I can choose between uh, Black Mage, Summoner, or Red Mage. And I'm kind of thinking of like, when you see Romani, right? Look at this, look at this dude. It was bundle of fun. Like, as a caster, what do you see him rocking as? Do you see him as a... I'm gonna kick him in the dick real quick. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what kind of vibe do you get from Romani uh, as a caster? Uh, Limbic says Red Mage. Psychotic and Assertobus both say Black Mage. Cybernetic says Red Mage. Oh, kind of half and half. Black Mage, Black Mage, Red Mage. Blue vibes because of the hair. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody could be a Blue Mage, to be fair. I'm definitely going to be doing Blue Mage content, though, with... Uh, Romani, but we're gonna be waiting until what was the expansion that introduced Blue Mage? Was was uh was Blue Mage Stormblood or was it Shadowbringers? Oh, it was Stormblood. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're we're not gonna start doing Blue Mage stuff until Stormblood. Oh, even the chat saying <laughs> the party chat saying Red Mage, Red Mage, Black Mage. All right, um, we'll, we'll see what happens later. I'm not really thinking about it now. But yeah, I would like to level up a caster just so Romani has all the bases covered, but I'm just kind of debating like what I'm gonna do. Personally, I would go Red Mage, but that's, all, that's only because it's my favorite caster of the bunch. Um, it used to be Black Mage, uh, but I am not very good at Black Mage and end level content. Like, I like playing the job. I'm decent enough at the job, but I, 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 I know I'm not at my fullest potential with that job, so I don't often play in endgame content. I say summoner for the funny Titan, why are you here moments? Oh my god. <laughs> Especially when I forget to set my pet size to small Titan, just large ass, just drops in and then I can't see the safe spot and I get hit by an AoE and die. Uh, Mief? I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory, so you can pull whenever a blue dino. Uh, this boss was changed, though, for duty support in terms of, like, what uh, attacks do what. Uh, I'll explain after we finish uh, the boss off. Oh, wow. Dude, that was just fucking dying there, dude. Primordial Roar is a raid wide. Use your feints, your addles, your reprisals. Blue Dino's about to fucking die. There we go. It's gonna summon a bunch of slimes. Oh, and you can't target the slimes anymore, either. That's interesting. I guess, yeah, because I guess I was attacking them originally was kind of a waste of time. The only one that mattered was the big green one. That's a stack marker. Yeah, so this this fight actually has appropriate mechanics now in terms of like what attack does what. Uh, because originally, um, depending on the slime that he jumped to, a player would get a red marker or a blue marker. Uh, the red marker was a stack, though, as you see right now. Now it's just a proper stack marker. Originally, it was just a red marker that you just had to know it was a stack. Uh, the purple marker, the one that is surrounding Alki right now, that was originally a blue marker that was a uh, point-blank splash damage AoE that you just you just took by yourself. You just make sure that you're away from everybody else. Uh, but since the rework, they are now properly labeled. And we can, since we're still hitting buttons, we can just ignore this last song, dude. So normally when this dude shows up, you're supposed to DPS him down before he does that raid wide attack that's unavoidable. And it hurts if I recall correctly if it goes off. Uh, but because our DPS is still pretty good, uh, we can just ignore it entirely. Yeah, but it took them a few years to actually rework a lot of Heaven's War dungeons to be more mechanically consistent with future expansions because there are still a lot of instances where markers are, are not very clear on what they do and that boss in particular tripped a lot of folks up because what does the blue marker do it means get away what's the red marker do it's a stack no it's not because the stack is those four arrows pointing at you oh, look trust me when i say it's a stack <laughs> i 
I love doing this in squadrons and seeing them just ignore everything. Oh, that's another thing we have to do, actually, to show off for Heaven Squirrel, because that was introduced in this expansion with squadrons. Although, I already leveled up most of them off-screen in my downtime with this character, so it's not going to be very exciting. But we will be showing off, like, command missions for squadrons so that I can get the exercise emotes. Uh, the push-ups, the setups, and the squats. You, got, you can only get those by doing squadrons. Uh, it's not that bad, though. It just, it's just time-consuming. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't done it so yet, I think I don't think squadrons are something you sleep on because the weekly rewards you get from doing them are pretty significant. Uh, they're basically... You can basically get a lot of... Uh, two-hour buffs that are the equivalent of free company, like, three actions. And that is... That's kind of a big deal because... Uh, so, I have one active right now, actually. Uh, thanks to squad. I just fucking jumped on that ice boulder. I didn't even do that. Uh, this right here, the Squadron Battle Manual, I got that from Squadrons, and it's a 15% increase to experience gained, which is the equivalent, if I recall correctly, to the Free Company Heat of the Battle 3? And that is, uh, that's a pretty big fucking deal. Uh, Edible Knees, thank you very much for the, uh, the bits. Hope you're doing well and happy holidays. Happy holidays? What's oh, I guess, yeah, it is close to July 4th. In America, anyway, but it was also Canada Day uh, today as well. Uh, I'm not I'm not Canadian, but uh, I, I I know of Canada. <laughs> uh, they're yeah they're mega useful these die uh, these days with DC travel too, where you lose FC bus and the other DCs. You're absolutely right. I always have a I always have squadron uh, ration manuals with me to extend my uh, my food uh, window. Uh, no, when we say DC, we mean uh, data center, uh, not Washington. Or dungeon cutscene. That also stands for DC. All right, this is our boss. This is Ratus. I, I, it's. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Trios is gonna kill me. But Trios is not here. At least I don't think Trios is here. Oh fuck. Detective Comics, comics. Uh, it's Tealman. Oh, yeah, this is Nidhogg's, uh, wife. I don't think I've actually done this since the rework, so I'm actually curious of what's changed with, uh, Tiaman. Chaos Blast is not... The Shadow of the Hedgehog move. It just does a uh, star shape AoE. There's a lot of dancing in this fight, if I remember correctly. But a lot of AoEs they have to avoid because she likes summoning meteors. Yes, Nidhogg fucks. Dragons need love too. Oh boy. Okay, so this is still here. Uh, this is going to drop a proximity. Uh, when the meter disappears, so you're supposed to get away from the group. Then when it drops, you just get away from it. Because that's a proximity marker. The closer you are to that pulsating circle, the more damage you will do. Most of the time, if you're right on top of that shit, it will just kill you. So get the hell away from it, is the moral of the story here. Alright, she's going to summon her wings. And now she is invulnerable until we get rid of the wings. Uh, red marker just means a bunch of AoEs are going to drop around you. Oh yeah, uh, excellent call with the uh, ranged LB. Oh boy. Get away! Fuck, she turned around. I don't think I got the position on that. In Spanish, Tio means uncle, so her name will be Uncle Man. Absolutely right. So I guess to be gender appropriate, uh, her name should be Titi Man.
Yeah, well, it's funny because like despite uh, being raised in an Hispanic household, like I, I've never called any of my aunts. No, okay, no, not true. Um, growing up, I called a few of my aunts Titi or or Tia. Uh, I have never called any uh, of my uncles Dio. I just called them uncle, or I just go on a first name basis or a basis. No, not Dio, Dio. <laughs> Yeah, I never, I never called my uncle Greg Dio Greg. I never called my uncle Mike Dio Mike. I just said Uncle Mike or Uncle Greg, or Uncle David, Uncle Uncle, <laughs> Colonel Dio Greg. <laughs> yeah, I use, uh, uh, I only use Titi for one of my uh, aunts back in Puerto Rico. I wonder how she's doing actually. I haven't talked to her in a while. Good shit, guys. I really hope we don't piss off Nidhogg because of that. We kind of just... We kind of just slayed his, uh, his wife. Oof. Lo-fi beats you can fucking get crystals back to. Now my Aether Piss has two streams. <laughs> I'm making a mess everywhere. Oh no! The wife! Nidhogg's gonna have my legs broke. I don't think Ned Hogg liked that. Ah, oh, heartburn. We will be encountering Ned Hogg sooner than you think, actually, because he is actually the boss of the next dungeon, the Airy. Uh, we're not there yet, though. We won't be there for a bit because we have a whole new world to explore afterwards. Uh, it was a Stidian's idea. It was. Also, fuck you. You ratted me out. <laughs> You mean the dragons aren't the final boss, but who could be the villain? Well, I mean, a dragon is a final boss, but not in the sense you think. I can't wait till we get to that fight, though. That's going to be fun. To the peak of some arc, at the end of a <laughs> some guy named Paul. mountain path. And this is our next Whence area. Could be seen a string of pearl-like islands floating in possibly atop a sea of clouds. To a domain where uh, do you mean the extreme version, Rio Spark? Yeah, we're going to be doing that. Majesty, no more we're going to be doing everything, baby, except for maybe Alexander Savage, but that depends on the kind of group of people that I get with me. Because, uh... <sighs> Doing savage stuff with Romani is kind of the only time I'm going to be selfish with who I recruit to my party because I want folks who know what they're doing. And I'm like, I, and, I, and I hate to be that way, but it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to stream three hours of us not going anywhere. Yeah, but I'll, I'll see who's interested in that later because I think some of you guys in the chat are interested in doing that. I'm you fucking psychos, uh, one thing, but you know, still. Some of you guys here are really experienced Final Fantasy 14 players from what it sounds like. Don't look at my FF logs for the current rates. Here. <laughs> okay, unfortunately I did not unlock flying for the previous area. No, we're in a we're in a new area now, Blue Dino. Uh, we're in the uh, the Churning Mists. So unfortunately, we can no longer fly. That's a, I mean, I can't get enough of that. Uh, what's the crab from again? Is that Eureka? Eureka Orthos? Because I'm currently doing that on my main character on my off time with friends. Uh, 
Oh yeah, it's Orthos. Okay, cool. Uh, do we? Do you just need to beat the fight, or is it something you get from like a, a pot shirt? Oh, it's gold. Ah, fuck, it's gold bags. All right, so I gotta be lucky to get it. Uh, okay, well we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, we are going to call it a wrap here, folks, for uh, this session of Heaven Sword. I'm sorry about the GPU hiccup earlier. That's going to cause the stream to be split into two. But you know, what can you do about it? Uh, when we next meet up, we are going to explore the churning mist, and then we're going to get uh, our introductions out of the way for some of the most annoying shits in the fucking expansion. And that's the Moogles. Uh, but you know, they mean well, but also fuck them. Uh, then we should be getting close to meeting Horace Felger, and we should be getting uh, close to fighting Nidhogg, actually, because he is the boss of the Airy Dungeon that we will unlock later. Uh, in the meantime, I want to thank everyone for coming down, and get thanks for the last, thanks for the company. Uh, thanks for the good times in general. I really enjoyed myself tonight, and I hope you guys enjoyed yourself, too. That said, uh, an NVIDIA GeForce Graphics Ready Driver is available to download. Oof, I'm cringing in my heart already. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Let's find someone to raid in the meantime. Uh, Ray's online. Look, let's go raid Ray. He's playing Shantae, half genie hero. Interesting. Oh, right, my portrait. Wait a minute. Hold on. That's the most important thing. I gotta go to my portrait. There it is. Look at that. Look how happy he is. He's just happy to be there. See, that's the face I want to greet folks with. Romani's here, and he's just having a good time. I love my monk pose, though. <laughs> Uh, still, uh, let us, uh, raid Ray. Oh, we need a raid hashtag. I don't remember. Oh, right, you know what? I got a raid hashtag. How about get DMV idiot? <laughs> He'll probably immediately understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, uh, hashtag get DMV'd idiot. <laughs> I will see you guys tomorrow for the DMC4 recording session happening over in the Discord. That's going to be an all-day thing, so if you, you got plenty of time to make it, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night, everybody. Do take care of yourselves and each other.